So I, I can say I'm more working about designing an optimal, optimal method for them using a comprehensive regression encoding models. Why is it important? Fat patient as the workhorse in the pharmaceutical industry. So if we get an improvement there, even if it's no improvement, it will have a huge impact. So before I go into details, first of all, what um, what cost I'm looking at. So I have a bioreactor in this bioreactor I have. My goal is to produce a product for a case study to be called as an express um, protein. And we repeat this uh, processes with different conditions at different feed rate and different temperatures and get for each uh, model data. So if we want to optimize the process, we first have to understand it. So we, what we do is kinetic modeling. Before I go into the model, I use myself, I will I get some basic principles as a reminder. The easiest kinetic model is if I have a monopoly biomass goes and I have some product depend, uh, product production dependent on the growth state, and I still need some uh, equation for the substrate to have math that is right. If I have a fat batch, I have a constant feed to introduction. So I have the depth of molecules. So first I have down the uh, increase of bio of Substrate again and some reduction factor for other equations. So, uh, the principle, the principle two for a kinetic model is that if I have a bench exponential speed, the substrate rate and the substrate concentration will be constant. So, on a cellular level, I'm in steady state, and therefore the growth rate and the production rate of biomass are still constant. This is not true only to a simple model, but also if I make it for most kinetic models, for example, if I in, in, uh, include additional metabolites in it. The question of is this really true in practical process? And well, not really. For our data, I see a uh, Constant as increase of production rate, even if the uptake rate is constant. But what could be the reason for this? The main reason will be some metabolic change that that happens due to the production, or the possibility of production inhibition or effects of high biomass concentration. The problem that now we have is if I include all these parameters, I have a very, very complex model for a limited set of data and a could have and will have a problem with all of it. So, what I'm doing about this, I declared a really uh, do a model framework where we handle the problem in three steps the model definition, the model simplification, the parent estimation, and the cost optimization. In the first, in the first step, I just use part of knowledge to set up a general model. So the step of stack model is uh, suitable for wide range of processes. And at this point, I don't care if the model, the model gets too big. I want to have all possible effects in the model. I can use this because in the next step in the model simplification, I use the data to reduce the size of the model. So I can remove all model terms that do not improve the uh, Fits the model bit. Okay, so this is what I have. Now I can have for all given other conditions, I can predict what I do. But this is not really the final target. The final target is to have an optimal process. This is quite easy if I say if I have a big speeding strategy for, um, for example, a big to expansion speed. If I don't do this, I we use um, Optimal control to solve this problem and to have public legs on the three dates for this. So, I'll show you how the 
also an equation in the fields. This is quite similar to what I have shown before, but it's just a little different notation to get modeling and then easier. The main difference is that I include a maintenance term and said the product is part of biomass and have to, have to be with this. The main change to do is now in the age list. So I have the uptake rate, I have the, the start domain used for cell maintenance, and I have a substitute used for product, and the rest is the substitute used for biomaterials. And in addition to the standard model, now I have these additional terms, which are emission terms. So I can have each, each equation can be inhibited either by, by substrates, by the number of generation which is a proxy for metabolic change, for the parts of biomass or for high biomass concentrations. And in addition, as I have data that is at different temperatures, I use a uh, temperature model based on enzyme kinetics to be this as well. How much was this all is really big for the thing. So I do now do the deduction. What, what I have mentioned before is that all three of these equations are independent of each other. So if I fit the rates from the data, from the data I can deal with each of these equations separately and decide which terms of the equation I really need. So how do I do this? I write model equation as, a, as, as factors. And if I do this, I can of course remove each factor and still have a valuable model. And to reduce it now, I fit the model for the, the whole model and as well for each model missing one of the vectors. In each case, I can have a piece of the model errors, the residuals, and with the residuals, I can make the app test and decide does it really, is this parameter really necessary? So if I can remove the parameter and the model error does not. In, uh, increase significantly is not really necessary. And to do the type, uh, I do this uh, iterative. So at each, after each step, I remove one uh, step if all my, if not all my factors are significantly, I remove the factor with the highest p value and until to the end, all my vectors are significant, and I have a new model equation which is considered simpler. For the concrete example, we could remove a large part of the inhibition variables and get a quite neat model from the large model we had to the beginning. And this model still is able to fit our data quite well. We have to consider this uh, biological data, so we have, we have noisy data, so because the noisy data is uh, quite good. And what's now interesting to me is how can we predict the optimum? So the first step, if we still stick to the potential feed, we can say, okay, I have an optimum in feed rate and in the temperature. For feed rate, you see that we have a high feed uptake rate, but not the, the, the maximum effect uptake rate. And for the temperature, we said the uh, beha uh, behavior we often get in enzyme kinetics, that we have an increase of activity with increasing temperature until we get to the point where the both the, the natural rate and we have a sharp drop off. As I mentioned, I still have the last step left. I can do better than this because if I'm not bound by the experimental feed rate, I still get better 
a better start. If you look at the black dotted line and the blue line under the same condition, I can get a better, a higher product uh, concentration, product concentration. And we also think I can still improve this if I either in increase the length of the process or start the production with higher biomass concentration. So, so as a reminder, what have we done? We have the final process, did the collected data, build the data in our framework, and from the framework, we still we get an optimal process that is not bound by some additional field. This is all your end of presentation and finally thank my research group for that support.